Hiya, I'm Bruce Fumi. Do you recognise the name Charles Edward Stewart? Did you know that he was buried here at Dunkeld Cathedral? If you didn't know that the last Jacobite king was buried here in Perthshire, then this is the video for you. But I warn you, by the time we're finished, you will not have a high opinion of Bonnie Prince Charlie. But if you're interested in the people, places and events in Scottish history, then hit the subscribe button at the bottom right hand side of the screen at any time. For books, links, how to buy me a coffee or become a member, that is in the description below. In the meantime, let me tell you a story. Now, we're going to come back here to Dunkeld for the end of the story, but to start the story, I want to take you to 1745 and Bannockburn House, just outside Stirling. <laughs> Now, this is Bannockburn House. When there's no COVID, it's open to the public. But today, access is limited to devastatingly handsome Buffalo Scotsman YouTube celebrities. And me. It's bang on the A9 motorway between Edinburgh and Stirling. Although you'll miss it without the link that I'm going to give you below in the description. Now, if you've seen my video, The Jacobite Road, this would have been on that, but for the fact that that video starts where this motorway becomes an A road. Now, if you haven't seen The Jacobite Road, you'll love it, trust me. I'll leave a link to that video at the end. Either way, this place is worth a post-COVID visit, and I'm going to tell you why. On the 14th of September 1745, Bannockburn House was the home of Sir Hugh Patterson. Now he was a Jacobite. He'd been out in the 1715 uprising. In fact, he was married to the daughter of the Earl of Mar, Bobbing John, who had led that uprising. And that got him attained. So he lost his estate and had to flee to France, but his wife stayed. And whilst the estate was lost, she managed to keep hold of this house until he was pardoned and returned. Now, on that September evening, Bonnie Prince Charlie and Hugh dined upstairs in this house en route to take in Edinburgh in his glorious march south. So let's go upstairs and see. This ornate ceiling would have been there at the time, but there was a floor across and a hammer beam ceiling below here. This wouldn't have been a balcony, but a grand dining area fit for the visit of a Jacobite monarch. More important than that, En route back north in January 1746, the Jacobites were besieging Stirling Castle. And during the siege, Bonnie Prince Charlie used this place as his base. If you come through this way, I'll show you the bedroom where he slept. Oh. Come inside. Now, whilst he was here, he fell severely ill. Medical forensic historian types have diagnosed the illnesses Hold on, I need a piece of paper for this. Man flu. But when you're Bonnie, you're the rightful prince and you're a proper Charlie. Having a sniffle means that the beautiful young niece of Sir Hugh will come and nurse you here in this room. Now, her name was Clementina Wilkinshaw. I don't need to tell you about the failure of the Stirling Castle siege, the success at the Battle of Falkirk, the disaster of Culloden, Flora MacDonald, the flight to France and all that stuff. So let's jump forward to 1752, what historians call Bonnie Prince Charlie, the Pish Head years. Now Clementina Wilkinshaw, the pretty young nurse, finds herself in Dunkirk and short of cash. I think we've all been on a booze cruise that went wrong, right? But fortunately for Clementina, the prince remembered her. I'll say. And he sent one of his lackeys with a big bag of cash in the offer that Clementina should come again and be Charlie's mistress. <laughs> what a smooth talker! Are your hearts a flutter, ladies? Now, while you recover from your romantic swoon, I'm going to head back downstairs. Now think about it, this is Clementina. Now her memory would have been of the dashing prince, the one from the 45 uprising, the one about whom we sing songs to this day. She would be only too willing to go back with the pimp to become Charlie's mistress. And a year later, they had a child together. But this wasn't the Charlie of the songs. To be honest, he's not even the most important character in our story. That person, is their daughter, 
Charlotte. Now, Charlotte grew up with a drunken, jealous, sometimes violent father. Now, I don't know what it's like to grow up with a violent drunk. I don't know what it's like to live in the 18th century. But when Charlotte was seven, she had to escape in the night with her mum. And that has got to be traumatising. What's more, they managed to escape this brutish young pretender with the help of the old pretender, James VIII, who provided a pension of a thousand livres so that they could have a reasonable comfort and an education with nuns in Paris. Bonnie Prince Charlie came home to a letter saying, I love you, but I'm in constant fear of my life. I just can't take it, so I'm just taking the bairn instead. Charles Edward Stuart went mental. But see, if you're so abusive to your partner and child that your dad helps them escape and gives them an income so they don't have to put up with your nonsense, hell mend you. And so Charlotte grew up in the pension from her granddad as her dad raged and refused to send a penny. But when she was 13 years old, the old pretender died and her dad, Charles Edward Stuart, became the rightful king across the water. But he didn't continue the pension that his father had provided. The king of Scotland, England and Ireland couldn't, or should I say wouldn't, provide for his own child. His dependents had to go cap in hand to Charles's brother, Cardinal Henry Stuart, who provided half the income that his father had, but only on condition that Clementina would sign a statement to say that she'd never been married to Charles. Now, if it was already clear that they'd never been married, why would he need that statement? If there were no witnesses, no documents, no records, why would he want this? Or was it a record to show so that he'd be able to hide existing records? I don't know. But five years later, the prince, now the Jacobite King Charles, did marry. Now, presumably that was a useful document then. But the one child from that marriage didn't survive. And so we have Charlotte. In 1772, when Charlotte was 19, Clementina borrowed money and took Charlotte to Rome in the hope that Charles would be shamed into looking after his daughter. But he had no shame. And he refused even to see them. Now that was the same year that Charlie married a woman ages with his own daughter. And yet when Charlotte was 22, when she decided that she had to marry, Charles refused the daughter that he'd rejected permission to marry or to go into a convent, leaving his daughter in a limbo that left her only option for provision and protection to become somebody's mistress. Well, go and fight for Charlie. No me. Charlotte became the mistress of Ferdinand Maximilian Meredith de Rohan, an archbishop, no less. She bore him three children and gave them the name Rohan Stark. It was a mixture of the archbishop's own name of Rohan and the Stuart name from her dad. She had two girls and one boy, whom she of course named Charles Edward Stuart Rohan Stark. In 1784, Charlotte's mum, Clementina Wilkinshaw, who first met the Bonnie Prince here 38 years before, took over the care of these three children. Why? Well, because in 1783, Charles Edward Stuart signed an act legitimising Charlotte and naming her the Duchess of Albany. Well, his young wife having left him because of his violence towards her and Charles now needing care himself, why wouldn't he? Paul go and care for Charlie? No me. But Charlotte did. However, as she cared for him in those last four years of his life, she never mentioned the fact that he had a grandson, also named Charles Edward Stuart. When King Charles III and the Jacobite world died, his assets passed to these three grandchildren that he never knew he had. But his title passed to his brother, Cardinal Henry, who would have no children to whom to pass titles. Charles Edward Stuart Count Rowan Stark is a subject, though bizarrely, actually not the focus of this video. There are no pictures of him here at Bannockburn House. The grandmother with whom he grew up is of course pictured with Bonnie Prince Charlie, who she'd nursed here in this house. There are pictures of the daughter of that liaison who nursed Charlie at the end, before she herself died shortly after. The circle 
completed and the name Charles Edward Stewart remained with Rowan Stark. The fortune that had been passed on was lost when Rowan Stark chose the wrong investments recommended by Coots in London. Marriage to an heiress was lost when he pursued the wrong sister. An unremarkable military career was followed by a short marriage, then widower status, and pursuing inheritances, titles or debts that he felt owed. That seemed like the full-time occupation of the latter generations of Stuarts. By the time Victoria was on the throne, the Jacobite claim seemed a distant memory, but he still tried to keep links with what had been Jacobite Scotland. And we're back to Dunkeld. In 1854, Charles Edward Stuart Count Rosenstark came here as well. He was visiting the Duke of Athol up the road at Blair Castle there. And on the way back, his carriage overturned. And a day or so later, he succumbed to the injuries that he'd sustained in that accident. He was buried here in the ruins of Dunkeld Cathedral. Now, in the stories that I bring you from our history, there are often those like Robert the Bruce, who came as a minor knight from Normandy, but whose descendants made Scotland their home. And one rose to be that great King of Scots. The Bruces were followed by the Stuarts. And when the Charles Edward Stuart that you've heard of landed in Eriski in 1745 to grasp a fleeting tenuous hold of that throne once more, clan chiefs told him that he should go home. He famously said, I am come home. Born in the Palazzo Muti in Rome, he died in the Palazzo Muti in Rome nursed in his last days by the only surviving daughter that he'd disowned. How ironic it was that her son, Charles Edward Stuart, that Bonnie Prince Charlie didn't even know existed, finally came home here, childless, to finish the Stuart story in Scotland. And sadly, that's the end of my story. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please like it and share it. I mean, Doc is going to be a lama alive. Cheerio and